everybody. I want to welcome you to the uh, online class once again, which is the second video of logic, philosophy, and human existence. So I believe you've been engaging with the first uh, video and class. And of course, I've seen some of your responses. Some are doing very well. Why some needs to buckle up so that you can uh, attain the good success which we aim at. So today, we want to focus on the aspect of logic. Last week, we dealt with philosophy. So today, we are focusing on logic. And we have three main topics to cover today. This is the second video. We are still going to the third and the last. So the first is many of logic. The second is types of logic. The third is issues in logic. So let's start with the meaning of logic. Now, logic you know, has several meanings. However, some important things that you need to know about uh, what logic stands for or what logic is includes the fact that logic is the in-depth thinking, reasoning, rules, rationale behind a thought or behind an action. It is the rules of thoughts. It is the rule of right reasoning. It is the principle of valid arguments. I will stop in, in those four key meaning of logic. So you shouldn't forget those four key log, uh, meaning of logic. So now, what are the types of logic that we have? Before we move to types of logic, I will quickly remind us or tell us or inform us that Logic has a Greek connotation, which means logos. Okay, it means logos. So don't forget, it has a Greek connotation. And moving forward, the types of logic. We have uh, five basic types of logic, and the first is formal logic. When we talk about formal logic, we are emphasizing on uh, issues that deals with formality, whereby we we inject empirical studies, empirical and natural science thinking into the way we live our lives. Okay, into the way, and we use deductive reasonings in formal logic. Now, let me give you some examples so that we can make it clear or clearer. The first example is when we say every dog is a mama. Okay, every dog is a mama. Then some dogs or some some quadrips are dogs. Therefore, some quadrips are mama. In that case, we are asserting that the formality of a dog being a mama also means because the dog is having four legs, then it shows that some Animals that have four legs are actually mama. So you can see how we generate uh, formality from the first uh, inscription. Now, another fact, it will say that every political party member is lover of money. Therefore, some government members are lovers of money. Then you can now conclude by saying that some political members of some political party members are members of government. So you can see the formality. We will draw formality from the first uh, premise through deduction. Then let's quickly move to uh, Fuzi. But before talking about Fuzi, we can also have a contrast of formal logic, all right? Whereby instead of saying every dog is a mama, we will now say, okay, every dog is a mama. Some winged creatures are mamas. So some winged creatures are dogs. You know, that is the contrast of the formal logic. Now, quickly, fuzzy logic. When we talk about fuzzy logic, it means something that is not clear, a set of arguments that is, is still shrouded in obscurity. Then what will you do? Or how will you understand fuzzy logic? So you use fuzzy logic to to clarify issues in technologies, 
issues in human behavior, issues in circumstance relating to life and others. Uh, a basic example of fuzzy logic is saying uh, from zero to one. Pick number from zero to one. There are billions of numbers between zero and one. You can start, if it depends on the decimal points. If you want to say 0 0.1 to 1, you have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 6, 7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, then you have 1. You can see. So just say 0 to 1. Somebody may just say, oh, it's just two uh, figures, 0 and 1. But it's more than that. So that's why it's fuzzy. You know, moving forward, saying that is a kind of old person. What do you mean? Uh, it's a, you say the man is 45 years old. So if you say, ah, he's a old man, you say, no, I'm not old. You know, I say, okay, he's young. You say, I'm not young. So for the fuzzy nature in that logic, not to offend the man, you say he's a he's sort of old. So he's not too old, he's not too young. And that is uh, the fuzzy nature in that. Then look at your appliances at home. You want to increase the speed of your fan. You pull it from zero to three. So the, the distance between zero and three is unclear. Now let's move to deontic logic. Deontic logic means something that is binding. What is permitted and what is obligatory. And at the same time, what is forbidden. So whatever is permitted, it means uh, it is not forbidden. So whatever is obligatory, it means it is permitted. The doing or the carrying out of such is permitted. Now. A classical example is that it is permitted for students to attend class, or it is ob obligatory for students to attend class. It is forbidden for students to miss exams. So whatever is permitted cannot be forbidden at the same time. So that's why it is called a binding uh, logic. So you, you, somebody commits a crime in the society, it is binded on the law enforcement agent to fish him out. It is, it is obligatory for you to pay your tax and so on and so forth. Now, let's move to modal logic. So, modal logic is a branch of modality. We talk about modality. There's con contingency, possibilities, impossibilities. I'm talking about modal logic. So, example is men are necessarily social animals. So, that's modality. So what is the modality in doing things in a particular office? What is the modality of doing things in a particular gathering? So that is what you must know. So on getting to that place, you must understand their rules and their regulations. The modality of operation, the modus operandi. So uh, the other one is, or the last one there is applied logic. When we talk about applied logic, we are actually... Uh, talking about the art of right reasoning in applying it to our daily lives. So something relating to like uh, we know that it is believed that remember that. So it is applied. It is already in existence. So we are now telling you using that it is believed that every student must write exams, must pay his uh, school fees. So that is the belief, is the applied belief because before you pick up your admission letter, you must have checked that you have the capacity to pay your school fees and so on and so forth. Now, moving to the issues in logic. The issues in logic, uh, they are up to four. So we want to quickly run through those issues. The first one is uh, inference. When we talk about inference, we are talking about using deduction, induction, and probability. Also, using statistical reasoning to get out a conclusion from an implicit premises. So when you say deduction, you are using uh, a kind of argument to draw out conclusion. So you are deducing from a particular argument from a particular conclusion. Maybe we have a meeting and it is concluded that every student should pay his due. So we, the 
the student right will draw from that inference from that conclusion that it is important for you to pay your dues now when we talk about deduction deduction is a rigorous proof that is derived from a particular conclusion so you deduce okay now when we talk about implication you no know, implication actually explains uh, the impact of uh, what is employed over a period of time. So, when we say A did not go to school, so it implies that A is illiterate. A studied law, it means that A is a lawyer. That has the implication. A is recruited, Mr. A is recruited in the police force. It means Mr. A is a security uh, employee. So, that is on that side. Then, quickly, moving to the fourth issue, which is negation. Negation, uh, we have four basic parts of negation. The first one is universal. The second is indefinite. The third is particular. And the fourth is singular. Now, talking about universal. Universal, we have universal affirmation. So, what are we affirming? We are affirming that when we see... I mean, every, that is talking about the whole world. So every boy is a scholar. So that is universal. So once I see any boy outside there, I'll say he's a scholar. Every boy is a father in making. So once I see any boy out there, I'll say, oh, he's a potential father. And if I want to use the neg negation of it, I will say, Every boy is not a father. So, talking about every beta is an alpha, then the negation will be what? Every beta is not an alpha. Now, talking about indefinite affirmation and negation, we'll talk about uh, some. Okay? So, you are not sure. So, you say some beta is an alpha. So, some boys are scholars. Some girls are scholars. So, I'm not sure. So I need to go further to test that assumption. So that's why it is indefinite. So some boys are scholars. Some girls are scholars. So we say some beta is an alpha. If you want to negate it, what will you say? Some beta is not an alpha. So some girls are not scholars. Some boys are not scholars. That's the negation. Then moving to the third aspect, which is particular. When we talk about particular, we are uh, identifying a particular object or a particular thing. We say beta is an alpha. Beta is an alpha. So once you see beta, you say beta is an alpha. So we say uh, university students are genius. So if I ask you, are you a university student? You say yes. Oh, so this guy is a genius. This boy is a genius. This girl is a genius. Now, the same in indefinite, you say university students, the negative of it, University students are not genius. That's a particular. Now, singular. Singular will identify a particular individual among the university students. So that's why it is singular. So from the particular, you are bringing out a, a you are singling out a particular person. So you say Socrates is a genius. Uh, is a genius. So the negative is Socrates is not a genius. So you uh, you have identified and pinpoint a particular person. So uh, the assignment for this particular video, which you have to do and submit in the comment section, is list and discuss three laws of logic. Yes, we have some laws of logic. List and discuss. Let me give you a clue so that you not make some mistakes. The first is law of contradiction. The second is law of excluded middle. The third is uh, law of or principle of identity. So I've listed them. I've listed them out. So discuss them in the comment section. And once you do that, uh, you have some points accurate to yourself. So thank you for listening. Make sure you engage, you share, and you like. Then you comment. Thank you. We'll meet again in the next class. God bless you.